Sam and the Lucky Money by Karen Chin, illustrated by Cornelius Van Wright and Ying Hua Hu. Sam and the Lucky Money. Sam could hardly wait to get going. He zipped up his jacket and patted his pockets. It was time to go to Chinatown for New Year's Day. Sam thought about sweet oranges and lucky money, crisp dollar bills tucked in small red envelopes called leases. Sam's grandparents had given him leases every New Year. Each envelope was decorated with a symbol of luck, two golden mandarins, a Chinese junk, a slithering dragon, a giant peach. Sam's leases were embossed in gold. Sam counted out four dollars. Boy, did he feel rich. His parents said he didn't have to buy a notebook or socks as usual. This year he could spend his lucky money his way. Sam, his mother called, it's time to go shopping. Hurry so we don't miss the lion. Coming! The streets hummed with the thump of drums and the clang of cymbals. Everywhere, dusty red smoke hung in the air, left by exploding firecrackers. Give me your hand, said his mother. I don't want you to get lost. Sam took her hand reluctantly. It seemed like everyone was shopping for New Year's meals. There were so many people crowded around the overflowing vegetable bins that Sam had to look out for elbows and shopping bags. Right next to the vegetable stand were two huge red paper mounds. Sam kicked the piles with his right foot and then with his left foot until he created a small blizzard. On his third kick, he felt his foot land on something strange. ay -ya! someone cried out in pain. Well, startled, he looked up to find an old man sitting against the wall and the stranger was rubbing his foot. Bare feet in winter, Sam thought. Where are his shoes? Sam stared at the man's dirty clothes as he backed away, and he found his mother picking out oranges, and he tugged at her sleeve, pulling harder than he meant to. Hey, I need this arm, she said. Where have you been? It's time to go. For once, Sam was glad to follow his mother. In the bakery window, Sam eyed a gleaming row of fresh char siu bao, his favorite honey-topped buns. And when they opened the door, the smell of sweet egg tarts and coconut pastries erased any thought of the stranger. Sam wondered how many sweets he could buy with four dollars. Nayumat yeha said a young woman from behind the counter, and when Sam gave her a puzzled look, she repeated the question in English. What do you want? Sam was about to ask for buns when he noticed a tray full of New Year's cookies. They were shaped like fish with fat pleated tails that looked like little toes. He couldn't help but think about that old man again, and Sam decided he wasn't hungry after all. Suddenly, he heard a noise from outside that sounded like a thousand leaves rustling, and he ran to the window to see what was happening. Look, he yelled. Bundles of firecrackers were exploding in the street, and rounding the corner was the festival lion, followed by a band of cymbals and drums. Sam pulled his mother outside, and the colorful lion wove down the street like a giant centipede. Teased by a clown wearing a, round, wearing a round mask, it tossed its head up and down. There's the fat man. It came to a halt in front of a meat market and sniffed a giant lisi that hung in the doorway along with a bouquet of lettuce leaves. And with loud fanfare, the band, the band urged the lion toward its prize. Take the food, take the money, bring us good luck for New Year, Sam shouted along with the others. His heart pounded in time with the drum's beat, and with a sudden lunge, the lion devour devoured the lisi in an eye blink and continued down the street. The crowd clapped and then disappeared. That was a hungry lion, Sam's mother joked. Now he felt hungry too and wanted to go back to the bakery. But just then, a large grand opening sign caught Sam's eye. In the window were Cars, planes, robots, and stuffed animals, and a new toy store, just the place to spend his lucky money. 
Sam ran down one aisle and then another. He examined a police car with a wailing siren and flashing lights. He squeezed a talking pig and laughed at its loud <coughs> Then he spotted the basketballs. A new basketball was the perfect way to spend his lucky money. But when he saw the price tag, he got angry. I only have four dollars, he shouted. I can't buy this. In fact, everything he touched cost more than that. What is four dollars good for, he complained, stomping his feet. His mother scrunched up her eyes the way she always did when she scolded him and guided him out the door. Sam couldn't help it. Even with all the shiny gold on them, the lacy seemed worthless. Sam, when someone gives you something, you should appreciate it, his mother said as she marched him along. Well, Sam stuffed his leases back into his pockets. The sun had disappeared behind some clouds, and he was starting to feel the chill. He dragged his feet along the sidewalk. Suddenly, Sam saw a pair of bare feet, and he instantly recognized them. They belonged to the old man he had seen earlier, and Sam also remembered him and smiled. The man also remembered Sam. Sam froze in his steps, staring at the man's feet. His mother kept walking, and when she turned back to check on Sam, she noticed the old man. Oh, she said, shifting her shopping bag so she could dig in her purse for some coins. Sorry, I only have a quarter, and the man bowed his head several times. He acts like it's a million bucks, Sam thought, shaking his head. As they started to walk away, Sam looked at his own feet warm and dry in his boots, and suddenly he stopped. Can I really do anything I want with my lucky money, he asked. Yes, of course, his mother answered. Sam pulled his leases from his pockets. The golden dragon looked shinier than ever. He ran back and thrust his lucky money into the surprised man's hands. You can't buy shoes with this, he told the man, but I know you can buy some socks. The stranger laughed, and so did Sam's mother. Sam walked back to his mother and took her warm hand, and she smiled and gave him a gentle squeeze. As they headed home for more New Year's celebration, Sam knew he was the lucky one.